What is going on, everybody? I hope you're having a great evening. JP Morgan is exploring a blockchain-based payment and settlement system, according to Bloomberg. Uh, former XTX executives are planning on pleading guilty to criminal charges, including um, the Salami Man, uh, Ryan Salami, uh, Caroline Ellison, and a few others are intending to plead guilty, which means... SBF didn't kill himself. Also, Coinbase is ramping up global efforts with a forward with forward-looking regulators trying to find inroads into expansion of cryptocurrency around the globe. And they're staying away from people named Gary or Goldman Gary or any of those bankers because they are looking to take it to the moon. BlackRock, <laughs> need I say any more? BlackRock is here for your Bitcoin. And guess what? It doesn't matter whether they get it or not. And I'm going to explain that in just a few moments. Also, uh, there's an expert here telling you how to uh, run your way through this bear market and prepare yourself for the upcoming Shiba Inu bull run. This is not financial advice. It's real spooky in here. Be very careful. Grab someone you love and hold on tight because... Ooh, the intro is coming. It's your boy Bleach. <laughs> Everybody, listen up. Let's get it. I'm trying to put money in your pocket. That crypto wallet. That bing bada bing ching ching big profit. Even when the market's sideways, I'm looking for ways to get paid. I'm checking my coins around breakfast, then again around bedtime. Bet this, it's not financial advice, <laughs> but I'm always right. 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 What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Bedtime with Bleaves. My name is Bleaves. I'm here to tuck you in with all that sweet, sweet knowledge that you need to get you through the night without any of those spooky, ooky Halloween nightmares that may be coming along. Before we get started, if you would, please, 100X Gems, I'm going to be launching my own token on 100X Gem in about five days. So uh, we don't have a name for it. It's all going to be kept under wraps until the moment you're going to see me live stream creating the token. You'll know the name. You'll know everything at that point, but you're going to have to tune in. So make sure that you've got your alerts on. Make sure you set alerts so that you know when I have content coming out. Also, uh, privacy, security, and protection. You all need it. And you know you need it. Uh, AJ Writes Crypto. If you don't know who AJ Writes Crypto is, AJ Writes Crypto is the gentleman that works for the Hit Networks. And look, He's a very good Ben Armstrong friend, a uh, very nice kid, a uh, very nice guy, and he got hacked and lost everything in his MetaMask wallet just the other day. And that is going to be, it's going to be a very difficult thing uh, to get caught up in that sort of situation. But if you had NordVPN, AJ, and anybody else, then you wouldn't have to worry about that. If you want, you can sign up right now, 90 days free, and then $4.99 a month going forward thereafter. So, ta-da, uh, I just solved all of your life issues. You owe me. Uh, also, MEXC for your futures trading, Gate.io for futures trading, Fairdesk for not only futures trading, but copy trading. I do copy trading. For those of you that know, I do have an Ethereum short out there right now, uh, sitting there, making a couple bucks, actually. Uh, it was up about $150 last night. Now, of course, the market is moving upwards. I'm not going to get liquidated on it. I'm pretty sure that I'm in a good position over there. And this goddamn cat is doing it again. Guts, what are you doing? Jesus, quit smoking crack, dog. And by dog, I mean cat, by the way. Uh, but I do call him dog because, uh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, um... Did you really go to the sauna with Ben Armstrong? Yeah. It's called a bathhouse. 
uh, have some respect. Anyway, uh, and Ruby Dex, we're going to be talking about Ruby Dex over the next couple of days. Uh, if you want to uh, check out Ruby Dex, that's going to be a decentralized exchange that will allow you to do. do. This cat is out of his mind. All right, so it's going to allow you to do um, uh, trading, and it will let you uh, set up uh, purchases. Um, oh my God, I lost my brain. I, I just—it's going to set limit orders for you. So if you get into a situation right now where you see the price action, you're like, "Ugh, that! I'm not going to buy at that price." But if it goes down a little bit more, I'm going to buy at that position. Then you can do that with Ruby Dex, which you cannot do, by the way, with Uniswap. You can do it with Didex, but you can't do that in the United States unless, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, you can do that in America with Ruby Dex. So let's get into it. First of all, uh, good evening, Mike Vollmer in the house. Robert T is here. Stephen Blaylock in the house. Richard Nelson is here. Proud to be a simp is in the house. Hurrah. I, I love that sound, right? Crypto Angels in the house. RW7610, good evening. Dude Tyler is in the house. What's going on, my man? Matty B uh, is in the house. The football game is tied 7-7 seven to seven right now. Uh, Justin W in the house. What is going on? Jorge Gonzalez is here. JR Alcorta coming at me from Texas. What is going on, my man? Jorge is from Miami uh, in the house right now. Used to love going to Miami. Used to hang out on South Beach. Friend of mine. And I one time went to South Beach and we were going down there because I lived in Fort Lauderdale and we were going down there to party and we stopped a cab driver and we said, hey, man, what's a local bar? And he sends us to a bar and we walk into the bar. It's a gay bar. <sighs> Story of my life. Uh, Dark Lord, the Dork Lord, I should say. Uh, Pepe, I am your father. Smash that like button. That's, by the way, being run by Matt Fury. For those of you that don't know. Now, who is Matt Fury? You might be asking. I don't have any idea, but apparently I'm supposed to care. So that's important. Uh, anyway, Matt Fury is running something called Dork Lord. Took his Matt Fury account, converted it to Dork Lord or something like that. Uh, you know, whatever. I don't even know who the person is, but I'm told that he's important. So blah. Uh, Osiris SGC is in the house. What's going on? Miles Maddox in here. Ryan's in the house. Uh, Michael, will Bencoin be fine transition to V2 on a centralized exchange? Yes, I'm sure everybody's going to support it. Uh, you don't have anything to worry, worry about. CODM and crypto in the house. Uh, ben Armstrong, the Donald Trump of crypto, about to get full support. Uh, did you really go to a sauna with Ben Armstrong? Now, the answer to that is no. Um, I mean, it's long enough to go all the way to Atlanta, Georgia. Ha, 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 ha. I was nine years old once. I told the jokes. Uh, but no, I, I did not go to a sauna uh, with Ben Armstrong. I did go, however, to a sauna. I go to a sauna every day. I have a hot and dry... Uh, a wet and dry sauna uh, that I go to every day. I guess you call it a steam room uh, and then a sauna. Uh, after my workout every single day, I do 30 minutes of cardio. After the cardio, then I go into the wet uh, steam room. And then after that, I go sit in the sauna afterwards. So um, with Ben, no. Uh, was Ben thinking about me while I was in there? Probably, uh, you know. Stephen Blaylock, uh, what's your call on Jasmine Coin? I uh, don't know much about it. Uh, but I know a lot of people like it. Um, saw the photos. Um, I, I think they're photoshopped. I don't know. I might have been drunk. Who knows? Um, listen, if Ben's pregnant, it's not my fault. I didn't do it. Uh, what is the old line? I think it's from Everlast. Um, even if I hit it, I got 100 homeboys to say I didn't. Something like that. I don't know. It, it was funny at some point. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, anyway, Crypto420 in the house. Trail Boss, what is going on? PS5 in the house. Jay Reyes. Maui, Hawaii in the house. What is going on, my man? Uh, Wizard Cell. Uh, is Bitcoin still going down? It's still going down. Might recover, by the way. It may. We might see a nice little run up to... Um, Nobody but Frankie Candles right now is talking about it going to 30,000, but Frankie Candles seems to think that it's probably going to run to about 30,000 uh, before going back down, and we're probably still going to see 23. Now, I don't want to get liquidated, but I don't really care. It's 100 bucks. I threw 100 bucks at it uh, to see if the short would play out uh, very well, and you know, uh, if it doesn't work out, 
it doesn't work out. It's okay. Um, I don't mind slow just a little bit. Uh, Rob T is from Naples, Florida. Uh, what's good with bad AI? Ba bad AI at this point, bad idea AI seems to be uh, the goat in the Shibarium system for the moment. And, you know, we'll see if that holds up over the next few months. I don't know that it will, but uh, it's 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 a cute AI technology. We'll see whether or not it has legs. Uh, dude Tyler, uh, Robert T says, Ben Nation. Dude Tyler says, steam room with eucalyptus oil. That's the best. Yes, it is. You used to do meditation in one of those steam rooms. Uh, and eucalyptus oil was one of those things you drop a little bit into the water supply. And then it, it enhances your breathing and stuff like that. So yeah, that, that's a that's actually a, a pretty good a pretty good thing. And let's see the bicep flex. Um, let's see what we can do here. That's as good as you get right now. Be everywhere now. Jose Luis says Dorkle Devs slow rugging. Not sure that's the truth or not. Don't know anything about it. Not invested in it. Don't give a shit about it really. Um, Shepe. And the other one, um, yeah. and this fucking cat. This fucking cat. Anyway, it's Halloween, so we're going to do a little bit of this in the dark. So uh, we'll see what's happening right. <laughs> we'll see what's happening right now. Uh, as you can see, it is now in the dark. And this goddamn cat, I swear to God. I need a new son. William Mack is in the house bolting it up. All right, guys, let's get into the news because we do have a lot to kind of look through here. JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon, every single time you get an opportunity to hear Jamie Dimon speak, he's telling you something bad about crypto. And uh, it's never great. It's, it's never great. Um, he always says something bad. But guess what? They are secretly, JP Morgan, exploring blockchain-based payments and settlement systems. And it would be hilarious. If that system was XRP, XRP continues to, uh, and, and in fact, the Fed now payment system, it is now rumored, will include, um, uh, will include XRP when they announce some sort of blockchain based launch, which I am told uh, through the news is coming. So uh, we're probably going to see something interesting happen over the next little while. But JP Morgan is exploring blockchain-based payments and settlement systems. So um, JP Morgan developed much of the infrastructure for the project, which requires a digital deposit token, but can't move ahead with system before getting the go-ahead from US regulators. So uh, <laughs> JP Morgan is looking to have its first digital asset and that's going to change the dynamic of the playing field. Not as much as BlackRock, but it will change the dynamic of this. Moving on. Former FTX execs plan to plead guilty to criminal charges. Uh, a September 7 court appearance by Ryan Salami. It's Sal Salame, I think it is. But you know what? We're going to call him Salami. Uh, Rhino Salami uh, could see the former CEO of FTX Digital Markets plead guilty following the examples of Caroline Ellison, Gary Wang, and Nishad Singh. So... Rhino, um, uh, Rhino Salami is probably going to plead guilty, and that's going to leave Sam Bankman-Fried in just a world of trouble. Uh, he is uh, he is going to have just a, a, a Jesus. Uh, look, the worst thing that could possibly happen is he gets put into a, a cell with a former police officer, and I hope Sam Bankman-Fried does not have an island, but... I got plenty of he didn't kill himself jokes ready just in case. You know what I'm talking about. You get it. Up here, Coinbase is ramping up global efforts with forward-looking regulators. And what this means is very simple. The publicly traded crypto exchange labeled Europe, Canada, Brazil, Singapore, and Australia as near-term priority markets. It's in the final stages, choosing the location of its MICA hub. The company noted, a reference to the European Markets and Crypto Assets Regulation passed in April. The efforts are part of the second phase of Coinbase's so-called Go Broad, Go Deep strategy uh, that was revealed in May of 22. Um, in G20 countries and other major financial hubs, 83% have made progress towards regulatory clarity for crypto. Um, so the U.S., however, is not among them. Coinbase is a public company in the U.S. because we believe the U.S., 
would be best served by embracing the fundamental innovation. However, we're committed to helping the, the uh, update the global financial system and providing more economic freedom and opportunity. We won't just uh, we won't stand idle just because the United States is. And uh, the United States is going to have to make a move very, very soon. Uh, we're going to be talking about Ben in just a few moments. We did have a new video from Ben. Uh, so just uh, pay attention. And if you're wondering why the lights are off, um, the answer right there, that fucking cat. This goddamn cat, I swear to God. I, look, and he's my buddy, by the way. But, but, but here's the good news. Good news is that cat's going to be gone in, uh, I want to say, less than a month right now. Uh, my son is moving out. So, um, yeah, that cat, adios, amigo, wherever the hell you went. Um, they, this little Satan monster is just running around here going crazy right now. I don't know if somebody fed him catnip or if he just got into the weed stash or, you know, whatever he got into. I mean, not that I would have any, of course, but just in case, be, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that cat. Ugh. Anyway, so back to it. Um, so the Coinbase is ramping it up. And then we have DCA, your way through bears and prepare for the Shiba Inu incoming bull run. Um, and really, this article is, Lucy highlighted Shibarium's decentralized makeup, noting it will be uh, major growth. She assured the community that the Shiba Inu team has a patient approach to project launches within the ecosystem. Meanwhile, Lucy shifted to the trading community. She noted that while some may choose to give up, others would persevere and ultimately reap significant profits by practicing. And listen, I am not bearish on SHIB in any way. I am immediately, however, slightly bearish. And I do think the price is scheduled uh, and set to probably uh, start to capitulate a little bit more because a lot of people have been holding for a long time waiting for uh, the SHIB burns. Now, it is my understanding that 9 billion, uh, 9 billion SHIB have been burned since the launch of Shibarium. And that we're going to see that born that the burn portal very very soon. But right now we're relying on spec for people to tell us that nine billion have been burned. And if we really consider, it's been about two weeks since the launch. That would mean nine billion over uh, two weeks means about eighteen billion per month. Now, when you come over and you look at the actual ship burns, then you'll see that twenty five million over the course of a day that was down forty nine percent yesterday at 54 million. So it's down even more today, only 25 million, but 9 billion were burned in a bear market. So obviously we're not getting nearly the burns that we were anticipating, but we're still getting burns and they're significantly more than what it appears right now with ship burn, which is basically zero. So we got 9 billion burned and we've only had a million wallets for a day. So uh, if you give a few more, you know, that 9 billion uh, and the daily transactions are doubled. So if, if we just allow this to continue moving, then I think we're going to see uh, 9 billion uh, for, for two weeks. I mean, I think the next one, probably 18 to 27 billion, maybe, maybe we're going to start to see a nice little run on SHIB. Now it's going to take some time before we really start to see a lot of success with it. So again, I do believe capitulation is coming. We're going to see some more price come down. Uh, I'm going to show you some buy areas in just a moment, and we'll look at that, and we'll just make some random guesses here on you know what is going to happen next. Also, uh, if you take a moment here and check out, uh, let's go with USDT. And let's look at the USDT across the world. And then let's look at the SHIB pairing. And we're going to take a quick gander here. This is Shiba Inu across the world right now. And as of right now, you can get a real-time look at where the buys are. The buys look like so far just going into America, just loading up. It looks like the American market is loading up on SHIB as we speak right now. Um, 87 million buy, uh, 6 million, 4 million, 10,000, 7 million, 1.4 million. It is just coming right now through the U.S. markets. And 
Uh, we'll see. Uh, you'll start to see it spread out across the world right now, but it looks like that the Shiv army is really, really, really loading up in America as we speak. And there are some big buys coming in. So Shib is probably, again, I do think it's coming down. I do think that we're going to see uh, a little capitulation on it. But here we are. We're looking at it. We're seeing a little bit of the positive move right now. So um, let's come over here real quick and look at this right now. If you want to see a beautiful chart at this moment, uh, the Ben chart is still continuing to sell. By the way, this is a daily chart. And look at this move over the last five days. Ben is just out of its mind right now from this bottom over here in 10 days we're talking about 140 percent 145 percent roughly because it's still mooning and it's still going up this uh by the way remember uh my charts reset at 7 p.m central standard time 8 p.m eastern every day so this chart right now is a brand new chart and it's already up 4.7 cent percent on the day this is what the one hour looks like it has just been uh incredible how Ben has been moving with the charts. And I mean, it could be part of the sauna. It could be because of the sauna. You never know. Uh, it's not, but it could be. I mean, maybe, probably not, but you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Anyway, so what we're looking at on Ben right now is something that I did not expect. I told you guys that I think that the maximum that we're going to be looking at, I think we would have 2891. You saw we, we rejected off of there, but we came right back in, started using it as support. It's very, very simple right here. Uh, popped over, came back down, um, and then came back up and then used it as support. And now we're bouncing off of it, which if this plays out and it's still strong, however, uh, you see that big wick right there? That big wick right there means that we're probably done with this move unless we get something positive happening. Now, if we do get something positive happening on Ben, then there's going to be some resistance. As you can see over here, there is resistance along this way. Uh, but if we can bust through that by any means, then the next step is 3720, which is uh, about 600 points more. Uh, so over the next few hours, we might see that. Now, most likely, most likely scenario after all of this play right here uh, would be a capitulation to the downside. However, it, it seems like we are still kind of running. Uh, 12.9 million market cap could be a 20 million market cap overnight with the right moves in place. So Ben looking very, very good at this moment. But as you can see, if you come down here and you start to look at some of the transactions here, uh, you see that that even though we're getting some nice buys, we are, we're also at the spot right now where we're getting some nice sell off. And that sell off, by the way, when you consider 145% move, a lot of these people are not just exiting the project. They're just taking their money, uh, their initial investment, and they're letting uh, their moon bag ride. So uh, good move so far by Ben. Uh, I did speak to somebody. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit more with the team uh, pretty soon. Uh, we're going to be talking about that uh, a little bit more next week. So we'll see where that goes. We'll see what it is that we're going to do uh, with the Ben uh, project. But we got the pump going. We've got it on the move right now. The good thing so far is that we're not seeing that, that move to the downside. And by the way, let me also point out, because as we look at this, and I want to move back over here because I really feel more comfortable doing the futures chart. Um, we've had a couple of moments here, and I want to point them out because I circled them earlier this morning. We've had capitulation moves right here, which did not sustain. We dropped down here. And then we found another top and then we did the same thing and we came back down and we got some candles again and then we moved back up and then we didn't even wick out here very much. We just came back down and then immediately started wicking up and minted a new high. And then we came back down, wicked just a little bit and then running back up and we've got that wick again. Now, when you look at this, that is a lot going on right now. This cannot sustain itself forever. So and also, we are waking up a few markets. Uh, this market right now, uh, this is another uh, wicking on the top here. And we are outside of the channel that we've been in for an extended period of time. Uh, none of this makes sense. Now, uh, that being said, there, drink, there could be uh, some news coming very, very soon from BitBoy 
that will motivate a lot of people to say, you know what, this is going to be my opportunity. First and foremost among them, there are now 11 days until the liquidity unlocks. And that liquidity unlocks is going to be moved to a holding wallet. And then it's going to be launched on the V2 chain. And then token distribution uh, will take place. And then there will be a launch on the V2. So FOMO could be building up and you have to consider where that's going to go. Now, it is difficult for me to say, and by the way, just so you guys understand, and I think you guys know by this point, I am something of a Ben Maxi right now. And I do think that in this 47 range, right around, by the way, uh, here, I want to call it right around this area here, because uh, as you can see right here, this, 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 that's a little bit low from where I wanted it to be. Don't know how that ended up there. Right here. Around this 47 line. Oh, there we go. Around 4,700 is where I think we're going to end up um, at a maximum sort of move, right? Uh, and that's not me being bearish. That's just me being a realist about, you know, what's the maximum potential at the moment. Now, uh, that would be a, a great move. Overall, uh, it wouldn't be the end. I think we still have some more to go. But to see a nice move into that 37 range would make me feel a little more bullish about what is going on overall. Because as you zoom out, obviously, this is where we are. This is what it looks like in the long term. So there's a long way to go. There's a lot left that we're going to have to sort out here. Uh, when you look at this right now, you're seeing the first uh, indications of some weakening of the bull pressure uh, and by that i mean if you look at this and you pull a little bit of this out you're starting to see um the the wicks are growing bigger up here at the top and we're starting to see more wicks happening across that top now what you would prefer to see is you would you want to see a hammer start to form uh like this uh red hammer right here you want to see something like this form with a big wick at the bottom indicating a strong move to the upside that's what you're really looking for, right? Uh, and then you look at your da, 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 volume. The volume has picked up significantly for this price move. Now, it's been green for five hours in a row. Can't stay green forever. Look at this. We don't see too many. Uh, this last time here, six hours in a row. That was a big move. That was when we got six days in a row uh, and got to the all-time high. Well, we're on day five right now. So, um, you know, the question is, can we maintain something like that? It's not likely that we maintain that there has to be a correction coming at some point. And if we're using uh, logic here, then we're going to say that if we've got a fib retracement here, then we're probably coming back down into the 2000s at least a little bit at some point if this move is done. Now, it could be this move is not done. So, uh, you know, if we come up and we actually go to where I say, then this, of course, expands out quite a bit and then we start looking at you know a fib retracement comes back down to 26 maybe even just 3000 or all the way down to 2042 so uh there's a lot at play right now um and it's looking strong like this is this is really looking strong we're at 3180 over here uh need to buy that wick back up that's that's what we need to see a lot more of this a lot more buying pressure uh as it buys that wick up and then we're going to start to feel pretty strong about it and that will be a great sign. Now, uh, Wagme Games sitting at 2461. Uh, that's kind of leveling off right here, losing a little bit of the steam, a little bit of the momentum. If you didn't notice, uh, if you remember, by the way, uh, this goes back just a little bit. Ben was on a show. Uh, the 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 show was, you know, we we do blah 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 with the crypto, and we've got all of this blah blah blah. And uh, George from Cryptos Are Us, and I think Wendy O is probably going to be the easiest one. Yeah, Crypto Wendy O. Um, she has da da and da da and then da 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 and then da 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 and then God damn it, I didn't know it was going to be this far. I didn't know she was this active on Twitter. I don't, I don't follow Crypto Wendy O, uh, so I didn't know she was actually this active. So forgive me for just a second. But as you come down here, uh, then you will see that she had a show that she's on uh, the most. Uh, you know what? It's not even her. God damn it. <laughs> it's Leia Heilpern. Uh, she posted something about it. I don't follow her either because I think she's just crazy. Um, 
first episode of the next crypto gem. There it is. So we have the next crypto gem show, which you can look at distro.tv, uh, the next crypto gem. And the one the one that makes uh, the, the one that makes me the most excited is this. Uh, Wagme is on the next crypto gem. This right here, if you don't know, that's Ian Bentley. He is the founder of Wagme Games, and they are talking about why Wagme Games should be part of the next crypto gem. And there's a final four, and there's 16 different cryptos. Go check the show out if you haven't already. Um, George, uh, Leah Halpern, uh, Aaron, and Austin Donald are on there. So is the show great? It doesn't have me on it. So they're doing their best, right? But uh, Ian made a really compelling case about Wagme Games. And some of the things that he said were that, you know, we're not using uh, NFTs in, in our marketing. We're not using crypto in our marketing. There's 96% of the world that still isn't in crypto. And we're trying to attract those people. And we're doing it by just not talking about it as crypto. These people will know that they've adopted cryptocurrency just because they will see it happen uh, in their wallet. And they will learn as they go that Wagme Games just happened to be something that was crypto based. So I think that this is going to be just an outstanding moment right now. Um, in, and by the way, I did watch this thing, this metaverse game called Beyond Reality. God damn, it looked good. Uh, look at the graphics. This game, let's turn that off. But as you see on this, oh, George, it's uh, disgusting, horrible. Ugh. But look at these graphics here. These are really nice graphics, uh, good ray tracing, uh, if you have a, a card that can support it, of course. Uh, and it is VR ready, and you can access it in your web browser. So uh, a lot going on, but I think Wagme Games might be in the mix here. And it could be that Wagme gets on a significant run. Guys, I want to point out, uh, I've been bullish on Wagme. You guys know that. I've been talking about it for a long period of time. I see it here at this 2065. We're at this level here, and I just feel like uh, Wagme Games is headed to, I, I wanted to say 300 million, so about 8x from where it is right now. But I, I, you know, I just feel like this market might not adopt as well as I thought, like maybe 200. That's about a 5x from where it is right now. So you know, don't sell it short. This thing could have just a nice, real parabolic sort of move um, coming very, very soon. Uh, if you if you kind of zoom out here, you see there's the top over there. Came up, almost got to the top. Didn't double top, by the way. It did not. We didn't get a double top. And you know, most of the time when you're looking at a bearish momentum changer, you're getting a double top. And this one did not work out that way it set a lower high. When it sets a lower high, uh, chances are it might move up and create a later on double top, uh, maybe. Here's the day chart, by the way, so you can check that out. Uh, but it's very possible that this thing runs up in the fours right now. And if it runs up in the fours right now, that would put it at about nearly 100 million market cap. Uh, and you know it could just start to go. Uh, and if you're a Wagme Genesis NFT holder, then you are going to be uh, super excited. Uh, not only do you get a whole bunch of stuff every single month for being a Wagme Genesis NFT holder, but uh, what you can sell, by the way, but you also uh, you also are going to get revenue every month generated from the game. So very cool stuff going on with Wagme Games and good to see them in some kind of uh, whatever. And here we go. Uh, Cheech and Chong selling weed gummies on Twitter. The biggest advertiser right now, weed gummies. Crazy crazy. Elon Musk, oh, Elon, Elon, Elon. Anyway, uh, so moving on to the next one, uh, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is, I mean, look, we've got, um, we've got a, uh, let's go look at this. You can see the volume here. Is, it's kind of waning down a little bit. We're going to turn off volume profile though, because uh, we don't want to look at volume profile. What we do want to look at though, is we want to get Vu Manchu and you can see right here, uh, I'm going to point it out for you in case you didn't know what this is. What we've got right here is that, and then you've got this move right here, and this is called a bullish divergence. So when you get a bullish divergence like that, then what you are looking at, and you've got a green dot minted down here, which means that potentially you're looking at some tremendous upside coming in. So if we have a few more hours of this moving up and moving up, uh, could we continue to move up and come in here and test this 30,000 range 
one more time before capitulation and a move back down here to this bottom. Uh, by the way, I, I that is what potentially could happen. I think it's more likely that, you know, as we look at this right now, and I, you know, I did a poor job of setting this thing uh, and showing you the, the, I just wanted you to see that there was a uh, divergence here, but uh, that also, uh, if I just kind of move this out a little bit more and start to look at it in a more rational context here, then we are minting uh, and, and probably can bring this out here a little bit more and maybe say that we're out here to give it the benefit of doubt just a little bit more uh, to say that, you know, maybe we continue on, but 28,000 could be where it bounces off up and then we head back down. We still need to come back down. Uh, I know nobody wants to see it come back down, but we really need to come back down in order to get into the pools to test the liquidity. And again, on this weekly, it is showing you that the liquidity pull uh, around this 23,000 level, this is the range. This is the area where a lot of liquidity is sitting. And I don't need to tell you about it. If you've been following me, you can see it on the chart every single day coming all the way down into this 23,008 range. That's where a bunch of liquidity is. And it, to be fair, going down here into this 21,006 range is still going to be a good spot to pick up a lot of liquidity in this market. So there's a lot of moves still left to be played on Bitcoin and in this market in general. And then we're going to move on uh, to the next one, which is Ethereum. Ethereum basically doing the same thing right now. Again, the, the Ethereum charts have not been as, I want to say crazy as some of the rest of the stuff. But I mean, let's look at the four hour, uh, four hour. You got the, um, it, you've got the move to the upside corresponding with Bitcoin, however. So we're not seeing a bullish divergence here uh, on the four hour. We're seeing a little bit of one on the, uh, it didn't play out as well, by the way. Uh, but you are seeing a little bit of one playing out over here on Ethereum on the uh, day chart. So we do have some activity. We do have some action. We do have some positive motivation, perhaps uh, coming in for the next little while. Maybe the algorithms are going to pick this up. And we're going to see it start to make a move. Uh, no guarantees. Uh, again, I do think that there are some problems with the structure of everything happening right now. I don't know that. I, look, the the basically... If you zoom in here just a little bit more, you can see the money flow has not changed. The money flow is still in the negative. Uh, it's easier to uh, grab. Let's, let's just use a MACD here. And let's, we got to close that one. We can't use that one. Uh, MACD shows money flow coming in actually, uh, but it wasn't showing it on the last one. That's just fantastic. Uh, but we do have a little bit of money flow in the positive. How long that sustains is going to be, I mean, it's going to be up to the market right now. Uh, but the RSI, everything is way, way down here. And the last time it was down here, uh, this is when I was telling you guys, I think something big is getting ready to happen. And what happened? Uh, we got this big move right here. Wasn't sustained. Uh, but listen, follow your signals here. We got a sell signal right here. We haven't gotten a buy signal yet. Uh, this is MACD histogram right now. Uh, if it mints you a buy, then it's going to be time to buy and uh, see what happens. But right now, we still don't have that minted. And we do have... Uh, 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 we do have a red printed over here. So, uh, you know, guys, I don't know that we're going to go very much further. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, same thing. Still, it was still on a sell. Uh, we're not getting a clear buy signal on it just yet. So uh, it might be early and it might fade out. We might be getting, uh, I think this was, and by the way, I did put this on Twitter. I think this is kind of a, a, a fool's rally. So, I don't think that we're going to continue to move to the upside. However, Grumpy Cat, still positive. Um, Pepe, back in the eights, which is uh, good, not great. Uh, going down the list here, though, we really haven't seen a whole lot of move. Uh, Veracity uh, selling off right now, uh, down 5.6%. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, we'll look at that a little bit later on, try to figure out what's happening. But uh, if you haven't already, and if you are looking for anywhere to do futures trading, Make sure that you're checking out MEXE, Fairdesk, and Gate.io. And for your privacy and security, make sure you're checking out NordVPN. Now, uh, let's turn off that histogram one time here. And then we're going to leave that MACD down in the gutter. And we're going to start looking and see what happened on our uh, on our plays here. So, uh, and we're going to remove this long, this, we're going to pop that off. 
and we're going to zoom in here just a little bit. We are right now in the value area low, which means most probably that there could be a play up to the value area high. This is on the daily, which is sitting right now at 31. So um, it is possible that we can get a big, strong move over the next couple of days, or we can get a big play just like we got right here uh, into this area. Now, if it Look, if we get into this 31,000 area, bet the farm on a short down to this area. This is the time. Look, this is the time. If this plays out, if you get a run up to 31,000 right here, we still have a liquidity problem. The liquidity is still right here. And we need this liquidity in order to get up here to the 32,000 liquidity pool, most probably. So if we do have this move to the upside and it goes into that 31,000 range, I would be taking my bags and I would be shorting this all the way down to 24,000. That is a life changing sort of move. Um, if you just consider that's 20%, if you do 10X leverage, that's a 200% move on a big play. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of people making a lot of money on that bounce. And then that bounce might be the final bounce uh, that we see before uh, this whole market starts to really turn around and and, and get sent. But um, again, like you you've um, you got to look at it and decide for yourself. The Bollinger Band starting to tighten again. Uh, you can see it right here. Even though it looks like we're having a breakout in the last few hours, uh, Bollinger Bands still very very tight uh, in this range in this window. So that should indicate a significant breakout is getting ready to happen. So. Finally, BlackRock, Death Wish. Thank you for the content always. Uh, go Char X. Okay, so let's go check that out real quick. Um, thank you for the $10 bomb. Uh, All right, looks like it launched 20 days ago. Raid Sharkbot. And look at this thing move. God damn. All right, so uh, market cap is still low. 229000 Good opportunity for entry. 25% liquidity base over here. Uh, 57,000 out of 229,000. That's a 25% level. That's a pretty good. Uh, uh, that's a pretty good number. This is a day chart, so you can see uh, we did double top over here. So there would be some significant downside potentially. But if you're looking to make a play, then maybe your play uh, could be in. It could have come down here at 4,000, and that might have been your play right there. Uh, but you are at the bottom right here on this range right now. I would be looking at potentially where we are right now uh, for this to pop back down here into that 4,000 range. If it does, and if it's supported, go do your own research and figure this out. But if it comes into this range, then you should probably, be, I mean, that that's a, that's the right range for a buy, right? Um, I, I would hope to get into the 36 or even the 3,000 range uh, for 78.6 retrace or 0.786 retracement. But I don't know that that's going to be in the cards. This is still early. Uh, it's 220,000 market cap. Uh, so it, it is entirely possible that it's just not going to make that move that we would want to see. Uh, and maybe uh, the opportunity presents itself for you to get in where you quote unquote fit in. And it looks like it is still, that's a pretty bullish sort of momentum swing for the moment. Uh, if it breaks uh, if it breaks down and uh, you're you're not really in danger yet, but if it breaks down below this level uh, in that 4,000 range, then you're probably uh, going to have to start looking. But otherwise, it seems like um, sharks is um, seems like sharks might be one to watch and play out. Uh, I would go check out the 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 website. I would go check out the Telegram, see what it is, see if you like it. Uh, it is shark based. So and with the Meg Two out right now and coming to your TV. Great movie, by the way. Uh, ridiculous, but still great movie because graphically it was awesome. Uh, Telegram Raid Bot addresses this lack of engagement, offering a strategy to increase the engagement your content deserves. So you can actually go and download and use the Telegram Raid Shark Bot. So uh, if you want to go check them out, certainly go check them out. Uh, but let's move on. This is the big deal. Um, this is. Um, this is the really big deal. Uh, I got to point this out to you guys. BlackRock controversy grows with conflicting accounts of China stance. Now, what they're looking for uh, is they're looking for um, they're they're looking for a clarity from China. Is China pro crypto or anti crypto? Because we don't know yet. We think that we know, but we never really 
No, with China. China has been pro-crypto for the last couple of months, and they've considered digital assets your possession. That's a very good thing. However, they have not said that we think that they're legal. So Hong Kong, by the way, uh, legalizing it. Shanghai, legalizing it. Uh, however, we still haven't seen the broader China make that move. So BlackRock is still waiting for that. But the important thing with BlackRock is this, and we got to be very specific here. BlackRock is looking to control Bitcoin, but they cannot control Bitcoin. So you're going to hear a lot of people talking over the next several months as we get closer to these ETFs that BlackRock wants to control Bitcoin. And that is true. BlackRock would want to control as much of Bitcoin as it possibly can, but it cannot. It doesn't have the capacity doesn't have the ability to control all of it. And here's the thing. What BlackRock is ultimately looking to do is they're looking to take Bitcoin right now uh, to buy it at 20 or 30,000 and they are looking to um they are looking to sell it to investors and convince you the investor that it's worth a million dollars. And they're going to want to sell it to uh their clients for a million dollars and they're not done yet. They want that to be more. They want it to be more. So um, it, it's kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned about BlackRock. Uh, I'm not really worried about what BlackRock is going to do. I think that BlackRock, uh, even if they are the, the, they are the company that we think they are, by the way, but they are also not able to do what people are afraid they're going to do. They're not going to buy all the Bitcoin, even if they want to. Um, they're going to drive up the price, if that's the case, to levels that is going to change your life. All you at this point have to do, buy some Bitcoin and hold it. That's all you have to do. BlackRock is literally going to do the rest for you. So that's it. Uh, Drag Dub says from earlier, uh, SHIB burned 9 billion. Great. They also used to have 349 trillion coins. Now it's 589 trillion uh, I don't know what 349 trillion is. Uh, that's never been the case. Uh, they originally had uh, one quadrillion and they burned 400 trillion, which they put into the wallet of uh, Vitalik Buterin, uh, or they gave him some and uh, then they burned the rest. So uh, it was 600 trillion. Now it's 589 trillion. So I don't know who gave you 349 trillion. That's never been the case. Uh, it's all renounced. There's no secret 240 trillion tokens that are hidden anywhere. Um, and by the way, some companies calculated a little bit differently, but there are no uh, there's no wallets that the, the dev teams hold other than their personal wallets. There's no funds or anything like that. Everything they do is through Shibarium now. That's where the burns happen. ShibaSwap, Shibarium, places like that, places where they actually have funding going on. Uh, the Shib Metaverse, all of those pieces uh, they've had to be creative and figure out ways to make all this stuff happen, and they have, but the supply hasn't changed. But they've only burned 13 trillion in all this time, so nine billion uh, in that short period of time with the launch and not having a million wallets until just now is actually the more I think about it, the more significant it seems. Now, if we get to two million or three million wallets in the next bunch of days, then I think it really it's 88,000 transactions. That's the the number. The 88,000 transactions, if that becomes 200,000 transactions, then what happens? Congestion goes up. The cost of everything goes up. That means that the burns go up. So I would be looking to see more uh, congestion, more traffic on the network, a lot more people building on it. And then I think that we're going to see something that, that could be potentially marvelous happen. But again, you know, I don't, I'm not impressed with $9 billion. However, when I take a step back and I look at how much they burn per month anyway, then it is actually... Fairly impressive for Shibarium to burn $9 billion in two weeks on its launch week. So, But if it continues, and if it continues to move up, then that's going to be a very good thing. So uh, we'll see whether it happens or not. Uh, but uh, I think we should be more concerned right now with this. $24 billion is the, the level of uh, a, a volume in the last 24 hours. Still just bad. It's just bad. Uh, we're going to need a lot more in this market in order to make anything significant happen. So uh, with that said, uh, the billions that we were up just a few minutes ago have now been sucked back out of the market. And we're starting to see everything capitulate and start to come back down. 
Uh, Bitcoin, which was on a little bit of a run, is now wicking out at the top and starting to retrace its position. In fact, on the futures chart, it's already back in the red. I don't know if that means that it's going to continue moving up or not, but we've got a wick here and another wick over here, and it's a reverse hammer at the 850. Uh, so we got 10 minutes for that to reverse. If that doesn't reverse, that's going to be a horrible looking uh, wick, and we're probably going to be seeing some downward momentum and some downward push off of that. And Frankie Candles is going to be not even close to right. And by the way, I'm not giving you the prediction here. I'm giving you somebody else's prediction because I still think it's coming down. So, uh, you know, we could see this thing reverse. We could see a nice move, but I just don't see any positivity in the market that would give me the indication that that big move uh, to the upside is going to happen. So um, you guys look at it for yourself. Try to figure it out the, the best you can. But um, the important thing for me is this. Um, I think that we are in a tight market right now. I don't think it's very difficult uh, unless you're doing just a risky gambling coin uh, right now or a token. That's about what's going to pump. Uh, nothing is going to pump unless there's some real solid reasons, which is why I think Wagme will pump, but it won't pump nearly as much as what I originally said, because I told uh, I told them I think it's going to do half a billion market cap, but I don't even think it could come close to that in this market. It, it could have at the beginning of this year if it launched at the beginning of this year, but it's not launching in that position. So maybe 200 million and then it comes back down. But if it goes to 200 million, uh, you can rest assured I'll be selling quite a bit of it uh, to fund uh, my way through the rest of this bear market because damn. Uh, but um, that's what I got for right now. Guys, if you haven't already, sign up for MEXE, start to do some futures trading, learn how to do this. This is how you make the money. Fairdesk, Gate.io, if you want me to do it for you, go to Fairdesk, I'll do it for you. Uh, Gate.io, um, Gate.io is 0 0.06 taker fee, very low uh, taker fee all around. So uh, if I have to, so Smiling Pub, this is, a, this is not a difficult situation for me. If I'm going long-term, uh, I would be putting money into both. I wouldn't be putting it into one or the other. Uh, and I am in both. However, I never thought my Wagme would be more valuable than my Volt. I will say that. And I will tell you also that the people on Wagme are not lending their Volt through CoinRabbit. So I don't have to worry about them uh, needing to repay debts and selling off on the chart while telling people they need to keep buying the dip. So uh, I will say that. And I will say that uh, I am most bullish probably overall on Volt um, and then Ben and then Wagme in this uh, DGen sort of community because I think that Volt breaks out of the DGen community, Wagme breaks out of the DGen community, Ben breaks out of the, the DGen community. I think that all of those are going to have nice breakouts. Uh, so, but that's for another time. Anyway, uh, time for me to go walk the dog, if you know what I mean. So anyway, this is not financial advice. My name is Blaze. I'm always right. I'm about to scare you. I'm about to scare you. So if you get scared very, very easy, if you get scared, then you might want to hold on to something. Grab yourself a dog. Grab yourself a cat. Choke the cat. That goddamn cat. I swear to God, that thing shows up around here. Uh, but, but anyway, yeah. Chicken, choke your chicken if you need to. But it's not financial advice. My name is Blaze. I'm always right. And we will see you guys for breakfast in the morning. Prepare to get terrified. It's been a long day. I mean, a long week. Maybe a long year. So let's get something clear. We're going to stock up all some party favors later on. Tell everybody they're invited. You should come along. That's